Hi, and welcome to Prepping Essentials. Well, good morning. <clears throat> Saturday, 25th of March, just literally pulled up at the land. It's a very windy, grey morning. Just thought I'd quickly show you something. You might recall this from a previous video, but look at that. We've still got a field full of geese again. <laughs> Literally just outside. <laughs> Very nice. Got a few bits in the car that I need to bring out. <clears throat> uh, I also saw, as I pulled in, I don't know if they're still here, there are a few pheasants doing the mating ritual literally just here by the entrance. Oh, there they are, they're in the distance there, look. Do you see him scampering across the field? That's Mr Pheasant. Don't know where Mrs Pheasant has gone. I took a little clip while I was in the car, so <coughs> I'll pop that in the video. Uh, well, let me get down, get opened up, unload my car, and uh, we'll catch up with you uh, in the cabin. Well, good morning and welcome to the weekend. It's a chilly on the fingers and very windy weekend. <laughs> we had um, a weird week of weather this week. We had some really bright sunshine, not warm, but nice to see. Uh, lots of rain different times during the week, daytime and nighttime. Yesterday was a really strong wind and today is also a really strong wind so I don't know what it's going to do over the rest of the weekend that might have an impact on what I can get done here. Um, I hope you enjoyed the little clip of the, uh, the pheasants dancing around in the spring the mating ritual. It was very nice to see nice to see any of the uh, the more exotic wildlife shall we say rather than just pigeons and rabbits <laughs> um, I've sorted out the chickens had the diesel eater on while I was doing that just to take the edge off inside uh, hopefully this cup of coffee will help before I launch into today's video which uh, is temptingly untitled Embrace the Chaos, is this the new normal? <laughs> we'll come on to that in a second. Just wanted to pop in a little extra clip, which I actually took on Tuesday when I came down to just top up the food and water on the chickens. Just when you thought things couldn't get any more weird down here on the land. Um, lo and behold, they do. So, take a little look at this clip. Well, it's uh, early Tuesday morning, just on a flying visit, checking on the chickens, um, who are all absolutely fine. Very wet day again. And I just came to literally pop some water in the polytunnel. <laughs> and uh, as I walked up to the gate, I saw in the corner of my eye something moving in that raised bed over there and all of a sudden something started leaping around and flapping around and it was a bird and then it flew off but it wasn't any old bird it was a duck and you're not going to believe this just when you think things can't get any bizarre look at that a duck literally since the weekend 
has somehow managed to get into here and I mean there are no obvious holes anywhere on this raised bed um, it looks like it's come out of here but how did it get in and it's made a nest and laid two eggs how bizarre is that um, so I'm not sure what to do with these eggs <laughs> I literally don't know what to do with them <clears throat> whether to I can't leave them I mean even if the duck comes back it's not gonna sit there well obviously it has <laughs> that's really strange anyway I'll let you know what I do with them in another video maybe at the weekend <laughs> but I thought I'd share it with you it's so bizarre well how weird was that <laughs> I've got rabbits trying to make a house in my raised beds, which is really annoying. Um, and now I've got ducks trying to make a house inside the raised beds. Truly bizarre. I uh, did take a quick look as I was coming across with the wheelbarrow. Uh, that was just stocking up supplies of um, layers pellets for the chickens, by the way. Uh, I did take a quick look and I had filled in that nest and lo and behold <laughs> they've been in and dug a new nest out so I might be finding some more duck eggs in there before much longer. I guess we'll see. Uh, in terms of what I'm going to get up to, difficult to say with this weather, I was hoping to get some sheets off the roof so that I can, I've put some more uh, bracing battens in between the rafters uh, and I just wanted to throw a few more screws into there just to finish it off but to do that I need to take off a couple of panels from this side so I can get through the roof and reach over um, and then run around with some expanding foam to finish it off and make it airtight um, I have noticed with this wind there's one tiny little bit at the front that's trying to lift um, so the sooner I can get that done the better but given the wind strength and um, the likelihood of rain today is not the day to be ripping off sheets from the roof <laughs> anyway enough of that how are you all doing I hope that you're all staying safe and well and enjoying your weekend um, not sure with the video whether I'll do one straight video today and that's it or whether I'll do a bit of a combination today and tomorrow there is just so much stuff going on um, I don't know if you cast your mind back to the the heady days of 2020 so this time three years ago um, who would have thought <laughs> we were just at that time in the very 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 early stages of the uh, the Covid crisis but what's changed since then god just about everything um, I know I've said in lots of videos over the last couple of years about these various different crises all coming together to combine into one mother of all crises and I suspect we're just about reaching that point now there are so many things going on um, but of course the the media is trying to do its best to distract everybody it's it's the continual saga of nothing stories designed to get you to look over there and not right here at what's going on in front of you I remember I think it was back end of the Covid crisis we had the celebrity court case of um, Amber Heard and I can't remember his name now Johnny Depp which went on for weeks and weeks and weeks and was a great distraction from the carnage that Covid and government policy had caused during that period and um, as if by magic after the balloon story uh, we've now got another nonsense story of Gwyneth Paltrow's court case um, I'm just wondering how long they can possibly drag that out for as a uh, distraction technique but underneath all of that there's an awful lot of real stuff going on uh, don't know where to start economy 
financial crisis, food crisis, energy crisis, war in Ukraine crisis, impending war with China crisis, the rear up of uh, Israel versus Iran aided by the Americans in Syria, such a huge list. So I'll try my best to run through them, but I guess the underlying theme of all of this is this combination effect and if we are about to reach that mother of all crises and I guess the message is embrace it all strange as it might sound so where to start um, economy I guess lots of news media articles over this last week um, there's been a follow-on from the, uh, the banking collapse in America and the knock-on banking collapse I touched on it last week I think of Credit Suisse which ultimately got bailed out by the Swiss government and um, the big Swiss bank UBS um, that's having a knock-on effect now across Europe uh, Deutsche Bank it seems is now in trouble and Deutsche Bank itself is a massive massive global bank um, based in Germany um, so there is a potential for a rerun of the 2008 banking crisis lots of people nervous stock markets nervous investors nervous are we going to see this contagion spread further and turn into another global banking crisis. Bank stocks tumbled again on Friday. As the week ended, investors once more grew concerned that the crisis for lenders may not be contained. That helped drive a down day for shares in Asia and then saw Europe open in the red. The regional stock 600 index was down close to 2% in early trade. Deutsche Bank led the way lower, falling as much as 13%. Traders were alarmed by a jump in the cost of insuring its bonds against default. Credit Suisse and UBS tumbled too, both falling around 7%. Reports by Bloomberg suggest US watchdogs are investigating the pair, among other banks, for helping Russian oligarchs evade sanctions. That might complicate the rescue of Credit Suisse by UBS, which Swiss authorities want to push through in as little as a month. This week has also seen volatility over the Federal Reserve's move to hike rates again. Capwealth Chairman Tim Pagliara says rising rates are the backdrop to everything that's going on. Well, I think the market volatility that we are seeing today is just a reflection of the challenges that the Federal Reserve created by raising interest rates nine consecutive times um, in a short period of time. And so... They have had to walk back some of the things that they were doing. Uncertainty over the next steps by U.S. authorities may not be helping. Right Treasury now, Secretary Janet Yellen has stopped short of saying what system. banks most want to hear. This is not something that we have looked at. Which it's is that Washington that will guarantee every cent of the $19.2 trillion on deposit at U.S. lenders. Here at home, uh, and been repeated across the world. I see it's the same in the US. Um, interest rates up again, another quarter percentage point to four and a half percent. Um, both here in the UK and in the US, that was announced this week. Um, many kind of financial pundits had thought that we'd seen the end of this because these interest rate rises are having a massive effect on both personal finance and business finance. It's stopping businesses taking out borrowing to invest. It's making them struggle with their existing borrowing repayments. And of course, for me, you and Joe Public, it's having exactly the same effect. <clears throat> the Bank of England has two jobs, to keep inflation low and to maintain financial stability. Today, despite the recent turmoil in global markets, the bank said inflation remained Britain's biggest risk. Interest rates were hiked for the 11th time, up to four and a quarter percent, the highest rate since 2008, and adding to the cost of living pressures for companies and households. But will today's rate rise be enough to tame inflation? We've seen signs of inflation really peaking now, but of course it's far too high. 
Now, we think it's going to come down sharply, really from the early summer onwards. But we haven't seen that happen yet. We had some news this week which was unfortunately going a bit the other way. We think there's probably some one-off elements of that. But we need to see it starting to come down progressively and get back to target. The problem is that recent weeks have seen three global banks collapse, raising the spectre of another financial crisis. With many complaining, financial weakness was the fault of rapid rate rises across the world and calling for central bankers to ease off. But it's not just the world of high finance that's struggling to get to grips with steeper interest rates. Hello. How are you? At the heart of Duke Street Market in Liverpool, restaurateur Harry Marquard says that his customers are feeling the pinch. Well, everyone's been, you know, been pushed quite hard at the moment. I think it's, it's affecting um, the, the lower pay grades more so than anyone. Um, and I think people are just using any, any spare cash they've got, really, just to put towards basic daily living. It's just the latest in a long list of hits to consumers and businesses. I think the increase is going to add significantly to our, our pressures in the industry. Um, we seemed, we've, we've seen massive hikes across the board in, in, in all costs. And this is just like a further kind of kick in the teeth for us. Government figures released today show there are now one and a half million more people living below the poverty line in working households compared with after the financial collapse of 2008, with these figures expected to get worse with the cost of living squeeze. There is also an increasing question mark over the impact of the 11 rate rises on homeowners, most of whom have been insulated by fixed rate mortgages until now. We've been in a position now where wages haven't been keeping place with inflation anyway. So people have been forced to eat into savings or to run up debts. This is likely to make that worse. It's definitely going to be very difficult for people who are coming to remortgage. People who fixed five or two years ago were more likely to be on something like 2%. Whereas now when they're remortgaging, they're looking at something like 5%. And that's a massive increase in their outgoings. I mentioned, I don't know how many weeks ago now, it might be a month ago, uh, my own personal mortgage on my house here in the UK and that I was re, uh, renewing part of my mortgage and the interest rate hike had impacted me personally. I'd gone from something around one and three quarter percent to three and three quarter percent. Um, I do have a, yet another part of the mortgage at the end of this year to renew and then I've got two other parts next year to renew. So I know that over the coming months and into next year, I myself am going to have some issues where my monthly repayments are going to increase yet further. Um, I did take a quick look and renewal rates now or new mortgage rates now are hovering around that 6% mark, which is a huge jump from where they were literally quarter, half percent only a couple of years ago. Um, so a definite impact there. Uh, similarly, inflation, <laughs> inflation up again, 10.4% uh, here in the UK. Um, you remember, it's not that long ago, literally weeks ago, they were telling us, oh, inflation's done now, it's peaked. It's actually falling and there's a quarter of a percent fall this month, so you should be grateful. Well, it's back up again. And having a real impact on everything, the price of literally everything, Food in the news yet again, or the inaffordability of food in the news again. Stories about food banks struggling, and interestingly, stories about the number, sheer volume of people that are now becoming dependent on food banks as a way of providing food for their families on a week by week basis. The numbers actually are quite horrific. Uh, here in the UK, they say that now 3% of families are dependent on food banks. And we've got what, rapidly approaching 70 million people in the UK. That's a lot of people if it's 3% <laughs> that are dependent on food banks. 
So there is a genuine sort of food affordability crisis on top of the, the crisis caused by rising energy prices. Um, lots of the salad and uh, other fresh vegetable shortages that we've seen this year have been predominantly around the slowness of growers here in the UK and Europe that grow indoors rather than outdoors, uh, the slowness of them to start production this year. They've all held off because of the dramatic rise in energy prices. It's just meant that they couldn't afford to start when they did. Um, they're all desperately praying that energy prices are going to start coming down sometime soon. Otherwise, they'll shut up shop early. They just It'll not be economically viable for them to actually run their big greenhouses. So huge problems around food supply and food availability and food affordability. It's as hot as a summer's day in the greenhouses of the Lee Valley, but the harvest's been delayed in the salad bowl of England. So our energy bills went from circa £700,000 per year uh, to last year's energy bills just under three million, maybe £2.9 million a year just on gas. They should be picking tomatoes and peppers here already, but heating 22 acres of glasshouse through the coldest months wasn't viable for growers squeezed by higher costs and fixed price contracts from retailers. We will be looking at obviously energy prices to see when we finish the season, so if come uh, August energy prices are starting to ri rise, we'll probably make a decision to finish the season early again. CPI inflation rose to 10.4% in February, defying expectations of a steady decline from recent historic highs. Rising food prices were the biggest driver, increasing 18% and accounting for fully 2% of total inflation. This increase in inflation has come as a real surprise to economists and it's food for thought for the Bank of England as it meets to discuss interest rates. They'll have to balance tackling what's happening in here, raising rates to keep inflation down with the risk of causing more stress in the financial system. The hospitality industry is feeling it too. The George is part pub, part community hub, but it's squeezed by the competition for scarce workers that's driving up core inflation as well as food and energy prices. It's really difficult to find reliable, cheerful, happy, motivated staff at the cost that we can offer. It's simple as that. Uh, we're working 24-7 without a wage, minimum wage going up next month. For the regulars, it's not just the price of beer going up. I'm a pensioner and without buying food or anything of that nature, if I don't work, my overhead, my outgoings, more than my income. Every time I go and do a weekly shop, which I did today, it's £10, £20, whatever more for just the basic stuff. These figures should end any cosy assumptions about the path of inflation. The campaign against rising costs just got more complicated. Paul Kelso, Sky News. All of these crises and the variety of uh, measures implemented by government to try and stop their economies just falling off that cliff um, is having a definite impact on people in general. Um, their confidence in the system, the government, their confidence in their ability to sustain their normal day-to-day -day existence. Um, we are seeing a growing number of um, civil unrest, protest, riots, call them what you want, in various countries around the world, including here in Europe, on a whole range of issues. We've got protests here in the UK around the mass immigration problem that we're having. We've got problems, uh, protests around energy and its affordability or inaffordability for lots of people. General discontent with government, um, wage levels we've seen lots of demonstrations protests and strikes by trade union movements here in the uk over the last few weeks and still going on today um, i touched on this last week briefly in france huge protests in france 
about the French government and their increasing the state retirement age for workers. Now, the French Prime Minister has condemned the violence that's accompanied mass demonstration against reform of the country's pension system. There were clashes in numerous cities on Thursday as more than a million people took to the streets. Vincent McAveni reports. Bordeaux's town hall set alight by protesters overnight. More than a million had taken to the streets across the country through the day angry at President Macron's raising of the retirement age from 62 to 64. In Paris, where over 100,000 had marched in a largely peaceful demonstration, the night was also hijacked by violent protesters. Running battles through the capital centre between small groups and the police saw bins set on fire, projectiles hurled and tear gas launched in response. There were clashes too in cities, including Lille, Strasbourg, Nantes and Toulouse. Overnight, the interior minister visited police headquarters. Since this morning, police have been the target of unacceptable attacks. 149 have been injured, some of them seriously. They've been hit with acid, Molotov cocktails and cobblestone. Labour protests are not uncommon in France. But what has irked huge swathes of this country this time is the way President Macron made his pension reforms, forcing them through without a vote, then appearing on television to double down. I mean, it was seen by pretty much everyone as a middle finger to the entire population. I mean, people were angry at already, and he just threw a, more, a lot more oil on the fire. So lots and lots and lots of little crises that have all started to merge together into one huge global crisis. And I've said this a few times in, in videos over the last year or so, probably more actually. There's nothing that you, me and Joe Public can in all reality do. We can't just flick a switch and all of this go away. Similarly, government can't just flick a switch and make this go away. These crises have been entirely of their own making with their policies over the last two, three, five, ten years. Um, all of the, here to use the word chickens, sorry chickens, but all of the chickens have now come home to roost and we're seeing the effects of all of this incompetency, I would say, by governments over the last few years. Um, and it's going to take a long time to put this right, which is why I titled the video Welcome to the New Normal, because this is. Um, you are not going to see suddenly inflation go back to zero, half a percent, one percent that we've become accustomed to over the last decade or so. Uh, you're not going to see interest rates come back down to zero or half a percent as we've been accustomed to for the last decade or so. Uh, similarly, energy. Um, we're not going to see energy prices come back down to what they were before the government started endlessly printing fake money as a means of being able to take that money and throw it into their pet projects, as they are still doing with overseas aid, aid to Ukraine, bailing out the banks, literally, again, this last few weeks. Um, this is all pretty much here to stay now and this is the new normal so the only thing that you can do is embrace that chaos and adapt your lifestyles to try and combat or mitigate the effects um, whether that's looking at changing your job trying to get a job with more money taking on another job I hate to say that but lots of people are doing that just to get by now um, adapting your spending habits doing without your Netflix or your Sky TV cable package, your extra mobile phones, your um, eating out or your takeaway meals that you have delivered to your home, all of this what I would call non-essential spending, trying to cut back on that and use that money elsewhere, build up your supplies of food now while, I mean, how much have prices gone up? 
the inflation isn't just at 10% now. If you take just the last three years from, the, from 2021, inflation here in the UK, prices have gone up 28% on government figures. So God knows what the real percentage rise is. Inflation isn't just your monthly figures or your annual figures. It's a cumulative effect over the passing years. Um, which is why I say it's never going to go back. Those rises are embedded now. You would have to have negative inflation for a period of years to get back to where we were in 2020, 2021. It's just not going to happen. So adapt and overcome. I started planting really early this year um, with a variety of success. You've seen it in the videos I've put out. I'd really encourage people, if you're not planting if you've never thought about planting really really now is almost your last chance bear in mind it takes a season to grow food you can't just pop a seed in and then go back the next day and harvest something it doesn't work like that apologies if i'm teaching someone to suck eggs again sorry chickens <laughs> but you know what i'm saying get your experience now build up your knowledge now buy seeds now before the price of them goes through the roof. Experiment with planting, experiment with growing and harvesting. See what works for you in your space and what doesn't and adapt to overcome. Um, I really, here, I'm only trying to sustain me or use any little surplus to distribute. Uh, right now, today, I'm not in a desperate shortage where I'm having to run off to a food bank, thank God. Um, but the way things are progressing, who knows what the situation is going to be by the time we get through the summer and start heading into autumn and winter of this year, let alone 2024. So I know I say it lots in videos, but please, if you're not prepping, get prepping. If you are prepping, redouble your efforts. Take advantage while the stuff is there now. Yes, I know it's more expensive, but the price isn't going to come down, so get used to it. <laughs> embrace the chaos and embrace the new normal. Much as we might not like it, we don't actually physically have a choice. We cannot do something today to change it tomorrow, we just can't. So, adapt and overcome. Build your experience, build your preps, your reserves, build your resilience, and eventually we will overcome and <laughs> I'll see you all on the other side I guess anyway enough about me uh, whatever I am getting up to I will pop some clips into the video um, as I said earlier whether it's a combination video of today and tomorrow or whether it's just a straight one hit we'll see and you'll find out in due course with that said what are you up to what are you doing are you prepping not prepping starting prepping building your preps have you planted yet? I know some of you have. Pop your comments in the comment section. Let me know and let everybody else know what you're up to. What are you doing to try and cope with all of these different crises that we're having? Let us all know whatever tips, tricks, suggestions you might have that could help everybody else that views the videos on the channel. The wind seems to be set for the day. The clouds are gathering as I speak, as I'm looking out through the garden room, so very limited outdoors today, but I am going to get some more stuff planted. <clears throat> I've got to keep pushing on with that, and I will take you for a run round and see what's happened between last week and this. So I'll catch up with you shortly, stay safe and well, and I'll see you in a while. I almost forgot to mention this in the uh, the cabin chat. I was that busy ranting <laughs> about the different crises going on. Um, but I was just going to take out uh, my lettuce for the chickens. And you might remember I said my chickens had stopped laying eggs. Um, well, when I topped the food and water up, um, they're laying again. Uh, I got some eggs on Tuesday. Um, and I've got some more again today. So... I'm going to pop out with the lettuce for them and then we'll have a run round and see how we're doing with the planting. But I just wanted to tell you that in case you were worried <laughs> about my chickens. Well, garden room is pretty much as it was last week. Um, it is nice to see 
the leaves coming on all of the the blueberry bushes, fig tree, they're all actually coming out of what I would call proper leaves now, which is very nice to see. That wind is not letting up at all. It's distinctly cool out here. I don't know if you can see the trees moving or not in the background. probably hear it though. <laughs> so yes the raised beds um, the garlic despite the best efforts of the rabbits is recovering and putting on new growth so that's really good. Onions are all starting to come through now some quite good growth showing on the onions a few bloody thistles in there again. I don't know how they managed to repopulate so damn quickly. And as I mentioned, <laughs> that duck's been in again and dug out another nest. So you never know, we might get some more eggs in there. I mean, I'm not complaining, free eggs. I did toy with the idea of trying to hatch a couple. Uh, but in the end, I thought I've got enough issues <laughs> with, <laughs> uh, bird flu and keeping on top of my own chickens without uh, suddenly adding a load of ducks to the mix. Um, heater still going. I did, um, I'm not going to burn my fingers now. I do have to clean this out every now and again. It is still going under there, I don't know if you can see the smoke. But I do have to clean off this sooty deposit every now and again. I'll do that in a second. Um, carrots showing quite well now. Um, no sign of these lettuce yet though, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, potatoes, we have got sprouts. I don't know if you'll see them or not, but there's one there. There's one there. Well, there's another one there there's another one down here as well just there um, so they are coming finally which is nice to see seed trays <laughs> we've still got the two solitary lettuce in that one I did reseed that you remember last week so it's a bit early for for them to be showing um, tomatoes coming. No sign still of the cucumber. I'm going to reseed those today. I've actually got cucumber seeds that I saved from my cucumbers last year which I'm going to use. And these peas. I think it's time now to take them out of this tray. They're getting a bit too big for this tray so I'm going to start planting some of these out. So I'm really pleased that they've survived the frosts we've had and they didn't get uh, killed off but it's looking like a bit of a <laughs> everything's strewn around it could do with a really good tidy up so that's something i might do today but wherever i am doing i'll let you know well these are uh, cucumber seeds that i saved from the cucumbers that i grew um, last year in 2022 Clearly, don't know how viable they are. For all I know, the uh, the seeds that I got and planted um, might not be viable. Lots of seeds aren't, which is why you should get a store of heirloom seeds, and then you know for sure that the plants that grow the seeds from those will be viable to grow on for new plants. So clearly I don't know whether that's the case or not with the seeds that I bought because if I remember correctly they were just seeds from a, a normal, it was actually one of the discount, discount stores 
they are fiddly. <laughs> um, but I guess the proof of the pudding, we'll soon see whether they are or they aren't. So I'll just get these popped in and covered up. And then I've got another tray, this one, which I'm going to uh, plant some early cabbage. So I'm going to get these popped in the holes, covered up, and we'll move on to this tray. So we've got our early cabbage. I'm just going to seed this tray. That wind's certainly picking up out there. It's just getting stronger and stronger. I really would like to be doing a bit more outside, particularly on that cabin roof. But I just daren't, <laughs> I daren't start messing with the roof with this wind. That would just be a a complete recipe for disaster. I had enough trouble when I uh, took out the old roof a couple of weeks ago and ended up fighting the rain and the darkness. I certainly don't want to uh, ruin the work that I've done already through my impatience to get it finished off. Anyway, let's get these covered over. They won't need any water and this soil is quite wet. Get the lids popped on and that's a few more seeds ready to go. Just give them a little bit of water for this cabbage seed because that was fairly dry on the surface. where I've just topped off with compost just to help them along and that's those done see how the cabbage and this new cucumber comes out fingers crossed tomatoes are not doing too badly to be fair considering they were planted in February <laughs> in the depths of the, uh, the frost I can't really complain about them so that's those. I think I'll pop the cabbage on that end. Leave the tomatoes where they are. Um, pop the lettuce back. And I think I'll leave the, uh, the peas on the floor while I decide whether to transplant some or not. Well, that's it for today. This wind is picking up really strong now. And it's actually started raining. Uh, I don't know whether I'll get one video or two videos this weekend. I'm conscious that the cabin chat might have gone on for quite a bit longer. <laughs> I guess I'll find out in the uh, in the edit and make a decision then whether I split it or do it as a one or whatever. Anyway, let me get into the car before I get wet. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, hope you're staying safe and well and enjoying your weekend. Do let us know in the comment section what you're up to. Really pleased to see that tree in leaf. That's the one that was dug up by the rabbits. Ah, fingers crossed. It makes a full recovery this year. Anyway, let me get in there. I'm getting wet. <laughs> I'll catch up with you all in the next one. Well, that's it for this video. I hope there was something in there that was of interest to you. If you did like the video, please do click on the like button. Also, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. As always, I welcome any comments, questions or suggestions you might have. Just feel free to leave them in the comments section below. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.